children were described in the Quran by Allah Azza wa Jal as the delight and adornment of this life. Al Malu wal Banun, Zinatul Hayat al Dunya. Wealth and offspring are the adornment, are the delights of this worldly life. And indeed they are. As a matter of fact, they are one of the blisses and bounties from Allah Azza wa Jal. But they are only a bounty if their rights are fulfilled. See, Islam obliged parents to fulfill certain rights for children. In order for them to become a bliss, a bounty, a comfort of the heart and the delight of the eye. The Prophet وسلم, and this is reported by Muslim, said, Inna li haq. Your child has a right upon you. As a matter of fact, the rights of children begin before they're even born. This is the beauty of this religion. There is nothing left out unattended. It starts by choosing the proper mate. Because children, in order for children to be upright and righteous, they have to have the right set up, the right household, the right father and mother in order for them to be cultivated properly. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Muslim, he said, a woman is usually sought for marriage for four things. Wealth, lineage, beauty, and religious commitment. These are four things that people usually look for when they are searching for a wife. And then the prophetic instructions came, choose the religious one. Don't go for one who is attractive but not wearing hijab just because she's beautiful. No. Weigh things in the Islamic or using the Islamic scale, the proper scale. And likewise, in the book of Ibn Majah, and classified as Hassan, as sound by Al Albani, the Prophet ﷺ said, If a man whose religious commitment and moral conduct are pleasing to you, meaning are proper, Islamically proper, approaches you for marriage, then marry your daughter off to him. So, selecting and choosing the proper mate is a right for the child. But since the mother is the one who is responsible for laying the foundation of the character of that child, emphasis came more on her, which leads to the second right, the right which happens after the birth of the child. I'm not going to go through the common rights Suckling the baby. No, no, no. I'm just going to talk about few rights that are very important and essential because the rights are plenty of the child upon his parents. Proper cultivation, religious cultivation, instilling faith in the heart of the child, attaching the child to his Lord. Making him committed to his faith are things that a child must be brought up upon. But again, since the mother is the one who lays the foundation for this, emphasis came on her. In the book of Ibn Majah, classified as authentic by Al Albani, the Prophet ﷺ said, Takhayyaru li nutafikum. Be selective, choose, properly choose where your sperm is going to land. Meaning, choose the mother of your future children. As a matter of fact, scholars said, 
If a man marries a woman knowing that she is not going to be a proper mother, raising his children properly, then he is sinful for everything wrong she does or she upbrings her children upon. It's important. The selection of the wife and the husband is a very essential matter in life for a Muslim. One married before he became religiously committed and married a wife who is not practicing well that he needs to endeavor, work hard to reform her religious commitment because he'll be asked about her and the children as well. Just like parents are responsible to care for children, provide for them, food, clothes, love. They're also responsible to instill that faith in their hearts. The Prophet ﷺ used to instill this in the hearts and minds of children from very young age. And the famous very long hadith of Ibn Abbas, he said, Ya ghulam, ihfaz Allah yahfaz. Ghulam is a oh, young boy. Some scholars said it's the age of zero to five. Some said he was seven. Now this narration, preserve the rights of Allah, Allah will be there for you, will guide you, will protect you. And then the, the, the hadith continues, it's a very long hadith. This hadith, Scholars over the centuries in Islamic history authored many volumes to explain it due to the dip, depth of the meanings, the, the meanings that are in the words of this narration. It's all about, about the, the faith and the creed of the believer, his attachment, his reliance, his trust, his commitment to his faith, his trust in Allah, reliance upon Allah. At an, age, at an age of five, six, seven, yeah, this is how important the matter is. It's amazing how some parents attach great importance to worldly materialistic manner, I mean, matters. My child has to look nice, he has to dress nice, he has to eat nice, he has to go to the best school academically, right? Even if that school will be in direct conflict with faith, negatively impact my child's character and religious commitment, as long as he is academically receiving proper education. I heard this so many times. Oh, they're receiving proper education. What about proper faith? That's going to go down the drain. No, that doesn't, that's, priority is lower, right? And people forget that they will be held accountable, they will be questioned about this. The Prophet said, والسلام, as reported by Al-Bukhari, Each of you is responsible and will be questioned about those under his guardianship. The man is responsible and he will be asked about his household and a wife is responsible and will be asked about her children. And if things go wrong, if they breach the trust by not religiously upbringing their children, then the consequence is severe. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ said, Anyone who is entrusted with those under his guardianship and he does not sincerely guide them, he will never smell the scent of paradise. People long to have children and the deprivation of children is something that we do not experience those who have children, but those who are deprived or who were deprived for long years appreciate it and know its value. But they give it its due right. 
in order to enjoy it in this life and in the hereafter how can one expect a child to supplicate for him like in the hadith in the book of Muslim that when uh, the son of Adam dies his deeds stop except for three things and he mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a righteous child who supplicates for him how can you expect that if you did not raise him on that Another right which stems from the right of religious upbringing is to instill noble manners and lofty characteristics in the child. Because this is a core issue in Islam. Instilling values like truthfulness, honesty, Bravery, benevolence, all of these manners are part of Islam. Instructing the child to give the rights of others, first and foremost, the right of Allah, the right of the Prophet, ﷺ, the right of the Book of Allah, and the rights of all those who have rights upon him. Properly guiding him not to wrong anyone. It's part of cultivation. Another right is to encourage the child to learn. Most importantly, to learn his faith. He needs to know whom he is worshiping. Who is Allah? What is Islam? Does he know the pillars of Islam and the pillars of faith? Well, these need to be instilled in the heart, deeply rooted from very young age. In addition to secular topics, engineering, medicine, what have you, so that he becomes a positive element in the community. All of these are rights that a child is entitled to. From his parents. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. In many cases, one or both the parents become emotionally inclined to one of their children, and therefore. Treat children unequally, which is something that the Prophet ﷺ warned against. In the book of Imam al Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ said, Fear Allah and be fair with your children. Treat them equally. You know, when you, when you don't treat children equally, this causes enmity and hatred between them, in addition to making them hate the parents. Whereas being fair and just and loving them all equally, treating them all equally, spreads the spirit of love, trust, respect amongst the children and makes children love their parents and give the rights due to them in dutifulness and kindness. As the Prophet ﷺ said to the man who wanted to gift one of his children and deprive others, he said, wouldn't you want that they're all equally dutiful to you? Meaning, if you want it so, then do that to everybody else. Be fair and treat them all equally. Another right for the child upon his parents is to give him a proper name, a nice name. You see, the name is something that sticks to the person. He's going to be identified with, known by in the, amongst people, right? And some people give strange names, some, sometimes bad names to their children. Why? Well, it was suggested by the father, meaning the grandchild of the, of the newborn, right? Or the mother, or what have you. Bad names have an impact on the person 
and his life. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ used to change names whenever he heard or he met someone whose name was bad. He used to change it. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, Sa'id ibn al-Jubayr, Sa'id ibn Musayyir, uh, rahimahullah, said that when my grandfather came to the Prophet ﷺ, his name was Hazm. Hazm means difficult and hard. So the Prophet ﷺ said, no, change your name to Sahl, ease. He said, no, I prefer not to change a name that was given to me by my parents. So the Prophet ﷺ left him. He did not oblige him to change the name. Sa'id said, ever since that day, hardship and difficulty continue to be in our family. So given a proper name to the child is one of his rights. Ibn Abbas said when the Prophet ﷺ was asked, he, said, he was told, we know that parents have rights upon their children, but do children have rights upon their parents? He said, yes. To give them a nice name and to properly cultivate them. Another issue is spending on children. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, it is enough sin for a man to withhold from those whom he is responsible to provide for. It is enough sin meaning it is enough for him to be punished if he did not do any other sin, if he did not commit anything else wrong, other than withholding the sustenance from those whom he is responsible to provide for, then it would be sufficient for him, enough for him to be punished. What's amazing is that in cases of dispute between parents or divorce, some men use this as a tool to get back at his wife. What's the fault of the child? He deprives the mother and her children from sustenance. Okay, you have a problem with your wife, that's one thing. It's unfair to deprive her from her sustenance even if you divorce her. But what's the fault of your child? So that you deprive him from his sustenance. Finally, brothers and sisters, a tool which many people are heedless of. And it is a right of the child. It's a weapon that cannot be defeated and no one has control over except you. Dua. Supplicating Allah Azza wa Jal. You have to earnestly supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal to reform your children, to raise them as righteous and dutiful children. Don't give up. Don't feel bored. I have been supplicating and supplicating and nothing is changing. My child is only deviating further and further. Well, don't give up hope in Allah Azza wa Jalla. Continue to supplicate for your child. And leave the results to Allah. So you never know which moment is the moment of acceptance of dua. Many cases, Allah Azza wa Jal reformed people by the virtue of the supplication of their parents when it was unexpected by the parents. They did not expect it to happen, but it did. So don't deem this insignificant and don't feel that you've been doing it so long. It is never too long. Because they will always, until you die, they will always need your dua. Even if they are righteous, beautiful children, your dua will protect them. They will, it will make them lead a life 
that's religious, that's joyful, that's happy. Don't deprive them from this right. Don't hold back. It's only words you're moving your lips and tongues with after all. It's no major effort. Choose the right times. Like when you're fasting, when you're prostrating the last third of the night, when it's raining, and so on and so forth. Choose the right time and the right spot. And then give it your full heart with Allah. And you will see the result in this life before the hereafter. Al Hasan al Basri, with which I will conclude was asked about the saying of Allah, رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَحْيَا O our Lord, give us from our wives and offspring a comfort to the heart, a delight to the eye. Meaning, a comfort and happiness to the heart as a result of their religiousness and uprightness. He was asked, is this something that a person will experience in the hereafter or also in this life? He said, by Allah, he will see it in this life. He said, there is nothing, nothing dearer, nothing more beloved to the slave, to the Muslim slave than seeing his child, his beloved one, upright, Committed, obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal. Indeed, there is nothing dearer and more beloved than this to a parent. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to reform our children and to help us fulfill their rights upon us and make them a comfort to the heart and a delight to the eye. اللهم آمين اللهم هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين